A popular radio personality, DJ Envy, denying any involvement in a real, alleged real estate scam. Envy has not been charged, but his longtime business partner, often promoted on Envy Show with Charlemagne the God, The Breakfast Club, facing charges of swindling investors out of millions of dollars. We've done a, a zillion and one uh, real estate seminars trying to encourage people and teach people how to buy real estate. So what do you say to people? First and foremost, I don't have enough money. How much money do I need to buy my first property, investment property? It all depends, man, one more, in what market you're in. It all depends, tri-state area. Right now, let's say if you wanted to buy a, a property that's $500,000, you're looking at, you need anywhere between twenty to 25000 in the bank. DJ Envy, flipping NJ. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. I got my guy Caesar right here. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy, flipping NJ. We want to see you guys September 26th in Atlantic City. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy, flipping NJ. Caesar and I, we didn't have any knowledge of real estate growing up as a kid. I was from Queens. He was from the west side of New York. And he knew nothing about investing. We both had to figure it out. You might know him on Instagram as Flippin' NJ, my friend sees a ping. He invested $200,000 and looks like we're never going to get it back. He's advertising this all over the radio and on television, so I thought this was legit. If it wasn't for DJ Envy, I would have never invested into Caesar. I lost a total of $64,000. He is a victim, just like the other alleged victims are in connection with this game. I adore yes. you. I, I want to I want to get a house from you. Should I, I see houses? But what are you flipping something? Ain't it okay. houses? What the fuck you <laughs> doing? Right. First time Ooh. picking up these joints. So we don't want to see the names on the checks, but yeah. Ooh. First time picking up rent and that's what it's all about. When I tell you about creating generational wealth, that's what it is. I picked up this is some of my rent. He owes me some more. His rent is picked up. Just getting started, baby. Well, every time I see you doing something, you flipping a house in New Jersey or some shit like that. No, I'm not a real houses. I, no, but I you buy flipping. houses, I, I fix them, and I rent them out. I'm not a realtor. I'm trying to encourage people to buy homes and to create You should become wealth. a realtor. Okay, but I'm trying to figure out because then you got the home, and you try to make money off the home. And you making money off the home. Yes, ma'am. So you selling homes? I'm selling rooms you, or apartments. I'm keeping it. SROs. <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping it. So, oh, you the slumlord. I'm oh, you got four families worth of niggas living under one roof? <laughs> oh, my. oh, my God. Does the government know? I'm Everything trying to encourage done... people to buy homes and to invest in themselves so they can always have property instead of continue to rent. By investing in you and get putting no. money in your pocket. Let's not act like you not making money. I'm just to the point I was making is you making money, right? I'm doing it the right way without getting got. But they got to get got by you before they don't get got. <laughs> Hey guys, so DJ Envy has been one of the faces of the Urban Radio, The Breakfast Club, for over 10 years. He has been involved in many notable interviews and has maintained his name and stake in the hip-hop community. But lately, DJ Envy's name has been in hot dumpster fire for the past months. He has built his name up to exceeding measures that has been slowly diminishing in the public. A man once known for his commentary and luxurious lifestyle he built for himself is now known for frauding his own people and becoming the face of an alleged Ponzi scheme. DJ Envy has managed to become affiliated with an alleged real estate investment scam for the last 6 years. And as of this year, the cookie is starting to crumble. DJ Envy for years has been promoting this lifestyle via car shows and success in real estate using his platform of millions of listeners to bring business to his business with Caesar Pina, the mastermind behind the alleged scam. This alleged scam entails taking investments to renovate and resell properties. These investments involve using money from different buyers and promising them fairy tales of 20 to 45% on their ROI, aka the return on their investment, in no later than five months. Pina was taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from his investors and reselling one property to multiple people, some of the property he didn't even own. He was forging documents and signatures to make everything look believable to his victims. Caesar was giving false information to his investors and continue to lie about the potential investment returns. A quick Google search will tell you that a great return on real estate is about 8-12%, to not 30 He was inflating his numbers to unsuspecting victims for a get-rich-quick opportunity. Now, how does DJ Envy come into play? DJ Envy is the face behind Caesar Pina's scam. Envy for years has highlighted his investment opportunities that has given him the wealth he could pass on for generations. Advertising this all on the Breakfast Club with and without Caesar, pairing up together claiming to own hundreds of properties worth millions of dollars, flipping homes and receiving instant profit. 
they teamed up together to sell a story on how they, especially Caesar, went from rags to riches. Started with no money, and here I am, $50 million later in real estate. DJ Envy started posting regular videos on Instagram of him and Caesar showing off potential renovations, talking about money making ventures, and most importantly, their seminars. Envy would constantly promote the seminars and Caesar on the Breakfast Club for years, using his fame to reach a broader audience and bring Caesar more investors. They would host joint real estate seminars around the country, promising attendees knowledgeable information like industry secrets and how to make real money from real estate. They did constant press runs going on different platforms to promote their seminars. Caesar's affiliation to DJ Envy opened doors for more celebrity exposure, increasing his credibility. That's how the masses get fooled a lot. Whenever a celebrity's name is plastered next to something, we as consumers see quality and trustworthiness. He has pictures with 50 Cent, Snoop Dogg, and others. Caesar's status symbol by his affiliation to DJ Envy and his multiple appearances on The Breakfast Club was a great way to capture unlikely victims. The Breakfast Club is an urban radio show and his main audience is minorities. DJ Envy and Caesar were selling pipe dreams to people that wanted to find a way to make more income, a side hustle because times are hard for some people, especially right now. After the pandemic, a lot of people realized that having one source of income wasn't stable enough. They marketed themselves as dudes that made it and used the minority trope as another way to weasel themselves to legitimacy. Holding seminars with hundreds of thousands of minorities to spread information about how to invest in real estate as a team. Caesar is allegedly the main man doing the dealings. Caesar Pina is a New Jersey native who spent time in prison and learned how to do real estate from another prisoner. As if that's not already a red flag by itself. I'm not saying prison reform isn't true. I'm not saying people can't transform their career paths after prison, but you learn to do real estate in prison from another dude that was in prison for what exactly what was he in prison for my love i'm not saying there wasn't potential for reform i'm just saying the jokes write themselves he got out and put those skills to use and started his business flipping and selling although he was making money and his business was growing his logic behind the scheme was bound to fail caesar's mo was basically using investors money to pretend to purchase properties for them to invest in selling one property to multiple people or properties that he didn't even own and running the scheme back in full circle trevor roman an investor lost 280,000. Paul Peralta lost 600,000 and there's many, many other victims. What is disturbing about this is a lot of minorities trusted this process, including Jeff Robinson, whose son died in a car crash. His son gave over $300,000 and never received a cent of that money back. In Patterson. My son, it's my world. And these people took advantage. His son, Jeff Jr., tragically died in a car accident six months ago, leaving two children behind. Jeff Jr. had invested $325,000 with Pena in this Passaic property. The dad says Pena then went dark. On that day, I buried my son. I called Caesar. Oh, bro, I'm going to meet you. I have text correspondings with Caesar, text messages. Oh, I'm, I'm running a little behind. He never met me here. But my main concern is getting what's due, due to those children. It's not fair. The comfort would be when my grandkids are in position when they have trust accounts with that money that he owes those children. And these are really just a few examples. Over 30 lawsuits have been filed against Caesar Pina and some on Envy. This has been going on for years. Sometimes when the small fish gets got, they usually don't get the justice the way they should. So just imagine how many of the smaller guys who invested small portions like 10 to 30k that never got a dime back from their investments because they might not have it to fight a case and if they can't get their money back, they just have to take the loss. Well, this scam of taking money in circles have ran its course. Cause remember, Caesar was taking money for these investments for hundreds of thousands of dollars from a lot of people. He goes ghost, then when he starts getting hounded by people for their money, he'll give them small payments of like 30k back or write them checks that bounced. Or in one peculiar case, he refunded people in chains. Chains. Augie Rios owns a custom auto wrap shop in Lodi, who says he worked on Envy's cars for years and believed his pitch. He did get back a return on an initial investment with Caesar, but maintains a second investment on this Patterson property went south. If it wasn't for DJ Envy, I would have never invested into 
Caesar. I lost a total of sixty-four thousand dollars. After receiving two bounce checks, Rio says he got a visit from Caesar carrying this box of jewelry. He said, uh, "Take this jewelry until I can pay you back." How much did he say this was worth? Fifteen. Well, Caesar ended up hitting the big fishes this time, and they're not going down without a fight. For some people, this all came to light when Tony the Closer exposed DJ Envy and Caesar. So DJ Envy filed a lawsuit for defamation against Tony. The main lawsuit that was filed was from Anthony Barone and Anthony Martini, who is a big music executive, who claimed that they have been defrauded out of $1.5 million over an apartment complex project that was never materialized. Anthony Martini, who invested in what he thought was a promising apartment project in Patterson. I lost a million dollars. And you went in because of DJ Envy. Uh, yeah, I did. I mean, you know, I'd, I'd known Envy for for years. Martini's attorney has filed deals. Now, Caesar, if he took money, I wasn't privy to it, nor did I even know. But for, for anybody to say I was involved, that's totally not true. And he's trying to do damage control. It was DJ Envy who personally introduced me to Caesar. Anthony Barone says he toured Patterson, New Jersey properties with Envy and Caesar, then invested $500,000 in a planned apartment project and also another business venture called Flip De Nero. Flip De Nero gave users ways to find out more information about investing and resources, but also allowed users to make small fractional investments in real estate projects via their website. Can you guys imagine where that money is now? And another $300,000. I invested in Flip To Down, which was an online uh, platform for fractional shares in buildings. DJ Envy is listed as the co-founder. I'm down 800000 And you think he's responsible in some way? I think he's absolutely responsible. This platform in which Martini and Barone also invested $300,000 in. While Caesar continued to dodge their phone calls and go by his lifestyle and Instagram posts, it put him in hot water. Now that the case has hit the news and has been sensationalized, DJ Envy is under fire. He maintains his innocence behind the whole scheme, but a lot of people don't believe him. DJ Envy was the face behind it all. In all the videos, he was the spokesperson leading the conversation behind the seminars, all the amazing deals they were getting, bringing in generational wealth to his family and community, selling the American dream to unlikely victims while Caesar was doing the dirty deals behind his back. There's a lot of blame to be passed around, but a lot of victims should have had better discernment on what and how these investments were going about. Some of the victims, without seeing a return or profit initially, somehow Caesar was able to convince them to invest in multiple properties after, without ever seeing a return on the first investment. And a lot of big money victims were also handing Caesar hundreds of thousands in straight cash, which is even wilder to hear. And the smaller victims need to stop entrusting people just because they are known people. Every time something happens or turns out to be a scam, we blame the celebrity for promoting it. A lot of people are here for cash grabs and that means celebrities because they are as rich as they seem and they will do anything for a buck without actually knowing what's going on behind the scenes. A lot of celebrities like Logan Paul or even big celebrities like Kim Kardashian have all been in lawsuits for promoting fraudulent stuff. Even though MD was a face, even he claims he lost money behind the scenes. But that's not what people are upset about. It's the lack of accountability that many feel like he isn't showing. Envy feels like he isn't liable because it wasn't exactly his doing. But along the way, people felt like he found out that Caesar's business deals was shady and he didn't take the time to warn people, especially on air on The Breakfast Club. Amongst millions of people. And I had a conversation with somebody today, Envy, and that conversation was even more damning because this person invested, uh, was, well, was about to invest and he asked you, should he invest? And you told him no. He was about to give Caesar a couple million dollars. Now I want you to I want you to understand something. That right there shows clear conspiracy envy. <laughs> I know based off what I was told today that you knew there was bad shit happening and back in May this brother was about to invest several million dollars and he did not invest. Because you told him not to invest. He told me that specifically. 
and you know who he is. The same platform he used to promote Caesar. Considering most people invested because of Envy's word, they feel like he is liable for those actions, not for scamming anybody. So since Envy is the face, he is in hot water because of Caesar's actions. Regardless if you knew 100% or not, it was still your partner according to you and the eyes of the public. They did documentaries, press runs, and even had plans to collaborate with a reality TV show about real estate business with 50 Cent. It's gotten to the point where recent reports say that the iHeart radio station was raided by the FBI and the Breakfast Club has taken down all of Caesar interviews from their channel. Caesar was arrested and is now facing 20 years in prison. Envy hasn't been charged but he is facing a hit in his public reputation. His industry friends and his followers that trusted in his real estate ventures with Caesar aren't happy and they blame Envy for introducing them to Caesar. Because if it wasn't for Envy, we wouldn't know who Caesar Pino was. Now that concludes today's video guys. Make sure you like and subscribe and let me know what you think down below. Thank you. Toodles.